One-story warehouse in Mina collapses. Emergency responders scramble to rescue several people trapped. Nigerians will be proud of President Enabu's sustainable policies. This is coming from Vice President Shatima at the Renewed Hope Agenda Dialogue. On World Telecommunications Day, a correspondent examines progress and challenges of ICT. Welcome to the News Desk at 6 and 98 News 24. We are reaching you live from Abuja. I am on Large Day Bello. A one story building serving as a warehouse for sorted drinks along Sabongeri Road in Mina, the largest state capital, has collapsed with more than 20 workers, including a pregnant woman trapped inside. Local people have been trying to rescue people trapped inside. So far, five people have been rescued and taken to the hospital for treatment while operations is ongoing to free others still trapped under the rubble. It was alleged that the collapsed building was renovated recently and stocked with more than 20 trailer loads of assorted drinks. Speculations are that this might be the cause of the collapse. Without any sentiment, the administration of President Bola Tinubu has taken off on a sound footing with sustainable policies that Nigerians will be proud of in the near future. This was the position of Vice President Kashim Shutima at the high-level dialogue in Abuja in advancing the gains made within the first year of the Tinubu administration. State House correspondent Abdurrahman Jibrila reports. We are here because of our place in a world of opportunities a wall that can't afford to neglect or underestimate our place. This is part of the Vice President's keynote address titled Delivering the Renewed Hope Agenda through enhanced international cooperation, imperatives, opportunities and challenges, set the tone for discussions at the forum aimed at laying the groundwork for the collaborative effort that will propel Nigeria towards a future of enriched international cooperation. For the sake of our nation, we have in place the renewed hub infrastructure development plan to further facilitate effective infrastructure development across the key areas of our economy. For the sake of our future, we are adjusting to the times. And that explains the adoption of CNG buses, which we are prepared to actualize in our drive for a nation that offers more benign alternative transformation channels for the people and keeps to its global commitments to reducing greenhouse gas emissions. The dialogue examines the work done by the administration in the past one year and the areas for consolidation on economic revitalization, social empowerment and infrastructural development while navigating the complexities of a rapidly evolving global space. I want to assure you that you will see a lot more of our work as a team as we enter the second year of the administration. We will continue to engage with Nigerians, home and abroad, regarding our work, prioritizing truth, credibility, and impact. Our country is one of the most attractive investment destinations in Africa, and projected to be the third largest national market in the world by headcount in the year 2050. Also been encouraged that the partners we have been talking to countries, um, high commissioners, uh, ambassadors, uh, development partners, private institutions have acknowledged the bold, courageous measures that have been, have take, have been undertaken by Nigeria. Discussions focused on the international cooperation between the government, international partners and investors, as well as key deliverables of the Renewed Hope Agenda. In Abuja, Abraham Jibrila, NTA News. The National Judicial Council has warned three judicial officers at both federal and state high courts and barred them from elevation to the bench of the Court of Appeal for a period. 
The affected judicial officers, uh, Justice Iyang Echo of the Federal High Court of Abuja Division, Justice Godwin Briki Kolosi of uh, the High Court of Delta State, and Justice Amina Shehu of uh, the High Court of Yobe State. While Justice Echo was barred from elevation for two years for abuse of discretionary powers of a judge through the wrong granting of an expertise order in the matter, Justice Godwin Brickey Colossi was barred for three years for his failure to deliver judgment within the stipulated period after adoption of final written addresses by the council in the matter. The council has equally set up committees to investigate allegations against eight judicial officers at the federal and state high courts. The NJC also approved the elevation of 22 judicial officers from the high court to the bench of the Court of Appeal. In addition, the National Judicial Council appointed 64 new judicial officers for federal and state high courts, as well as the customary and Sharia Court of Appeal. Meanwhile, the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Olukayo de Ariwola, has called for close synergy between the bar and the bench, noting that both belong to the same profession with the same goal of justice delivery. The CGN, who spoke through his representative and president of Industrial Court of Nigeria, Justice Benedict Kanyeb, noted that the golf tournament was a perfect avenue to relax and exercise at the same time, given that the jurists do most of their jobs sitting all day. On our part, the President of the Court of Appeal, Justice Monica Dungan Benson, said sport was a good way to promote oneness and bridge the gap between members of the bench and the bar. It's about calling out to our entire nation that we can differ, it's okay, we cannot all think the same, we cannot all believe in the same thing. It's okay to be different, it's okay to take different sides of, of the coin and uh, still be together and be joyful and be, be live in unity and in harmony. That's what this thing is all about. The essence of the event is to create a forum such as this for interaction between members of the bar and the bench. The House of Representatives is worried about how drugs are sold openly, pledging legislative support to the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency and the Pharmaceutical Council to close down illicit drug outlets in Nigeria. This captured the aim of the interface between the House Committee on Drugs and Narcotics and a delegation from the NDLEA. National Assembly correspondent Joshua Gunjide has details. The Green Chamber seeks clarification on the report of the National Assembly on the NDLA Amendment Bill 2024 as the bill is long overdue for presidential assent. The House Resolution on Section 11 of the bill seems, however, not in consonance with that of the Senate as members reject death penalty on offenders while more legislations on oversight are recommended. When the bill is different from the House and the Senate, then the Senate, the con the, there will be a conference call conference committee between the Senate committee, House committee on narcotic drugs and uh, I mean Senate, co Senate committee on narcotic drugs. That's what we are waiting for now in the House. For all these drugs that were seized, what happened to them? Were they destroyed? Um, do you have any room for presenting some of these drugs that, are, that can be used for all these big pharmaceuticals? The committee would like to know Exactly the number of assets we have recovered. What your organization is doing and to control these issues in our schools. And we are appreciating what they are doing. But unfortunately, all what has been happening is manually. The worst cases of drug use in Nigeria is the Southwest, with a 22.4% prevalence, just as Lagos remains the state with the highest prevalence, with 33%. We also look at the drug demand reduction towards the prevention of drug abuse through advocacy, counseling, and treatment of drug users. With 15,000 staff strength, the NDLA says in the last three years, over 52,000 arrests have been made with convictions of over 9,000 and confiscation of 7,500 tons equivalent to 200 trailers of drugs worth about 1 trillion naira. Our intelligence-based enforcement capabilities which focuses on the drug barons and cartels with a view to cutting off supplies and taking illicit drugs away. 
from the National Assembly, Joshua Gujde, NT News. The Conference of Speakers of State Legislatures of Nigeria has expressed confidence in the current policy direction of the present administration, however appealing to the federal and state governments to align human face in the policies to ameliorate the hardship being faced by Nigerians. This was part of the resolutions at the end of its conference in Abuja. Muhammad Rabiu Ali reports. The meeting had in attendance 29 speakers out of 35 from the state's legislature. Deliberations focused on good governance, state police, and how to end insecurity in the country, as well as constitutional amendment processes. The conference observed that in spite of the constitutional provisions that grants financial autonomy to the state legislature, the implementation has been observed in breach. We therefore call on the relevant stakeholders to comply with all the provisions in the constitutions and not by breach. The National Assembly, under the leadership of uh, Dr. Adjutin Abbas, is determined to ensure that the state legislative autonomy comes to reality and we seek the cooperation. Chairman of the Speaker's Conference, Adebowale Ogundoin, appeals to the relevant authorities in River State to explore peaceful means in addressing the impasse between legislative and executive arm of government. In Abuja, Muhammad Rabi Ali, NTA News. This is the News Desk at 6 and NTA News 24. More reports after this break. Thanks for being there. The federal government says it will continue to empower Nigerian youth with requisite skills in education that foster innovation, entrepreneurship and sustainable development of the country. This was at Ministry of Youth Development retreat with the theme Achieving the Eight Presidential Priorities and Deliverables in Abuja. Olayin Kaujo reports. Globally, Youths are the lifeblood of any nation. Nigerian youths represent more than half of the population, but they face many challenges. If the government or the administration rather can create a job awareness program or create more jobs for the youth. Government need to be interested, they need to be interested in data, they need to be interested in feedback as well. Though, Nigerian youths hold immense potential and opportunities for national development. Daunting challenges such as unemployment, skills gap and limited participation in social economic and political spheres have remained the issues and the time to suggest concrete solutions is now everybody in this room up your game and transform catalyze entrepreneurship endeavors with youth at at the core of job creation and economic development for now the ministry is keen into federal government's eight priorities of reforming the economy, strengthening national security, boosting agriculture, unlocking energy and natural resources, enhancing infrastructure and transportation, focusing on education, health and social investment, accelerating diversification and improving governance for effective service delivery. For the attainment of our singular goal of creating social, political, and economic opportunities for every Nigerian youth. We bring out initiatives that are outside the budget and stop thinking about budget, budget. There's a lot of ways to reach out. We need collaboration. And since formulation, implementation, monitoring, and evaluating youth development policies and programs that align with national objectives are pivotal, a communique committed to empowering Nigerian youths is expected at the end of the retreat. Olayin Kaujo. 
MTA News. The importance of the internet, information and communication technologies to human endeavors in recent times cannot be overrated. Not only because they bridge the digital divide across the globe, but for their speed and accessibility. In this special report, our ICT correspondent examines the progress and challenges facing the telecom sector in Nigeria as the world marks Telecommunication and Information Society Day with the theme Digital Innovation for Sustainable Development. In the bustling heart of the city, where skyscrapers stretched towards the heavens and the hum of life echoed through the streets, World Telecommunications Day dawned with the promise of connectivity. It was a day not just to celebrate the wonders of technology, but to reflect on the profound impact it had on societies worldwide. In a small apartment nestled amidst the urban sprawl, I sat by my iPod, my fingers caressing the screen, to reach out to a colleague to get some vital information. With a few clicks, I initiated a video call, and soon, Dennis Adegunleye's face illuminated the screen. This was a litmus test to check on the progress made so far, and this was my experience. I'm actually working on uh, this special report on uh, World Telecommunications Day. Uh, and as a broadcaster, how has uh, the telecoms enhanced your uh, performance on your line of duty? Absolutely, Jide. I remember just a few years ago that uh, the, the equipment we have at our disposal now, uh, I suppose to five years ago, and there's no comparison. Definitely now, uh, our work has been completely transformed and revolutionized in a way that our output is far more efficient, more effective. Not too satisfied, I decided to approach Salu Aminu, whose business is powered by the telecom sector. $5, On the other hand, Deborah Agbola, a broadcaster with the Nigerian Television Authority News 24, sitting in the comfort of her workstation, peered into her smartphone, marveling at the power it held. With a simple swipe, she sent a message to her son in another country, bridging continental divide, and in the twinkle of an eye, she breathed a sigh of relief, knowing her son is hale and hearty. But amidst the celebrations, there were reminders of the challenges that lay ahead as the digital divide still loomed large with millions around the world lacking access to reliable internet connectivity. The disappointment that this business has normally have needs of problem because once you do draw to somebody or your customer, you should went decline and debited him. Calls for greater investment in infrastructure and policies to ensure universal access echoes. They have improved our technology and they've assisted in the very vital sector, which is telecommunication. They've assisted people in communicating, bringing people closer from different parts of the world. And in terms of supporting businesses, they've made businesses to thrive in a better way. Mm, seriously, it hurt a lot, not only my family. Because it's from this business, I'm sponsoring my younger brother. I'm going to school. As the sun sets on World Telecommunications Day, on large day, Dennis, Deborah, and countless orders around the world reflect on the journey that had brought them to this moment. They were united, not just by wires and signals, but by a shared vision of a more connected and inclusive world. On large day, Bello, NTA News. Raising attention on the importance of a better hypertension control, Customs Wives Association of Nigeria, COA, is now in the vanguard to collaborate with other partners to sensitize the populace to the danger of the silent killer as the world marks 2024 Hypertension Day. Kunle Adeyeye reports. Statistics from the World Health Organization reveals that about 1.3 billion people are hypertensive globally. The report says nearly half of them are unaware of their condition. Consequently, Customs Wives Association of Nigeria has taken the awareness to the headquarters of the service to sensitize its officers who engage in tasking exercise to the dangers. It is very important that we recognize uh, the importance 
of understanding this condition and empowering ourselves with the knowledge and taking proactive steps towards preventing it. Good news is that hypertension is preventable and manageable with early detection and proper care. In the hostel and bustle of our daily routines, we often overlook this fundamental truth. Today, we gather here to remind ourselves of the simple but yet powerful steps we can take to safeguard our well-being and ensure a healthier, longer life. Uh, it's good to take your BP twice, at least take an average before you conclude on the final figure. Then it is good to use the left arm. If you use the left, it's close to your heart. It will give you more accurate figure than when you use the right. And sometimes too, you can take it on the two hands. The president of the association also enjoined members and others to make regular medical checkup a habit. Kunle Adeyeye, NTA News. Inspector General of Police Olukayo de Egbedoku is tasking graduates of Leadership Command course to ensure significant improvement in preventive policing through an effective community policing and tactical intelligence. This is in a message to the graduation of the Tactical Leadership Command course at the Police Staff College, JAS. Ijeoma Ozoemena reports. Taking cognizance of the security challenges faced by the nation, the Inspector General of Police marched word with action by inaugurating the 60 participants comprising Chief Superintendent of Police drawn from various commands and formations across the country. The Tactical Leadership Command course participants 2022-2024 were exposed to traditional and contemporary approaches to handling extant security challenges, interagency collaboration and joint operations as well as crisis management with Plateau State as a case study. Now that we, are, we, are, we have a training, we will go and impact it to our subordinates. The expectation from the citizens is simple. We are coming out and we are giving you a new format. The Inspector General of Police, represented by the Commandant of the Staff College, says as tactical leaders, they are to adapt and stay informed about emerging trends and technologies in law enforcement. Now that you have been groomed, energized and repositioned, I charge you to go out there and make a change. For the leadership course participants, the training allows them to build resilience and critical thinking skills for optimal performance. Two outstanding officers were honored for their dedication to duty and exceptional performance. In Jos, Ijoma Ozemina, NTA News. Thousands of farmers whose ginger farm were recently affected by a strange disease in Kaduna State have been paid a total of 110 million naira as insurance to mitigate their losses. The insurance payout, which is a private initiative, was made possible through a collaboration between Pula Haifa International Nigeria, Libre Insurance and Apex. Thomas Ogbetere has the details. Smallholders farmers produce a sizable percentage of the food supply in Africa, but face about 90% chance of crop loss due to factors outside of their control, such as pest outbreaks, flood, strange diseases, and other natural occurrences. Without crop insurance, they are at the mercy of these factors. Encouraging smallholder farmers to embrace insurance as protection better this news conference by Pula and its partners to help farmers overcome total losses. It's an insurance package that covers farmers for a comprehensive suit of risks. We talk about flood, we talk about drought, pests and diseases. In this case today, we are discussing about the cardinal farmers that were affected by the ginger blight. We prioritize climate change because it is a very present challenge that will continue to exist for a long time to come, like we have said before. And if we neglect to educate farmers about the things that he can do to overcome such challenges or prepare himself for such challenges, then we haven't done our duty well. Consequently, 110 million naira was paid to farmers who insured their farms. 
Thank God for the insurance uh, package that we have with them. Afa, full up, and lead with coming on board at the right time to say, okay, this is insured, let's pay back to the tune of the insurance, and we settle everything. So these same farmers that would not have, ask, have access to production again or impute loan has been settled, and they can assess impute loan for a new season. If that is not done, investment will go to waste because you need to be smart in tackling the challenges of weather. It adds is with us, and it's one of the major challenges that is affecting our food system. And insurance remains one of the tools that you can deploy in tackling climate change. They entreat farmers to embrace services provided by these four organizations and to avoid total loss in case of any eventuality. In Abuja, Thomas Ogbeteri, NTA News. And that's the news desk at 6 and NTA News 24. Thanks for watching. I am Olajide Bello. Thank you.